banned. Is this a Syndra first pick right now? See, this is nice by TCA, because now JLB have to make that option. It's like, do we go for that first pick? Uh, Syndra, do we leave the Fiora open? Obviously not, also available. So there's a few power picks around here, as well as Elise, let's not forget. Elise, incredibly strong at the minute. And sure. when you've got someone like Jet playing it, he was so on point with those cocoons. Is it worth just trying to take that away from your opponent? I actually think it was the best part of Jet's play, to be honest, in general. I don't think, whoa, the first pick Bard comes what? out. <laughs> That's gonna throw a, I, I, I think, I don't think TCA were fully expecting that. I don't think anyone was fully expect I Like, fair enough, play Bard. Why would you... I don't think it needed first picking, right? Like, as much as I want to be like, oh, wow, Bard first pick. At the same time, it's like, you know, that first pick is actually incredibly valuable. Two massive power picks have gone the way of TCA now. Well, Jet picks up the Nidalee, which we know he's incredibly skilled with, and that takes it away yeah. from Zanny. Uh, Gragas obviously wasn't banned, but Graves is banned, and Zanny plays a lot of Graves, so that has been taken off the table. Uh, also, yeah. Noteloplex is a very, very solid Graves player. Gonna potentially I I, I'm, st I'm still just baffled by the Bard pick. I think that it could have just been saved later for the draft. There's a, in Challenger uh, and that kind of scene, Bard has got a lot of, I guess, um, prioritization put onto him, but I, I am wondering where this slots into a team composition for, for GLB, what they're planning on doing with it's, Bard. It's not so much that I dislike the Bard pick, it's just that they first picked it. Yeah, no, I agree. Have you ever seen TCA <laughs> put a lot of pressure on top? The only, the only thing, I think, in, in terms of my head that makes sense that this happened was that maybe if Braum is banned, Raisins prioritizes Bard after that. But I don't, I've not seen him do that. Um, so yeah, the first pick is the, is kind of a little bit odd for me. The composition is shaping up to be kind of like a a poke isolation composition. We'll have to see what happens to the rest of it. They're saving their top and mid for last rotation, which means that one of them is going to have to get picked by TCA now, right? They've already picked mid, so they could leave their top laner right to the end, but that does, does risk potentially losing Fiora to Shikari should Shikari want to pick that up. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see what is going to be the next rotation here. Blitzcrank being hovered. I seriously doubt that's actually going to be picked up here, but I've got to say, this is an interesting composition already for GLB with the Lee Sin and the Ezreal on top of things. This is kind of... I feel like they're going for fringe picks right now. They're going for picks that are sort of in the meta to some extent, but not really those standard power picks, not the ones that you would automatically prioritize. So Deadly is going to pick up Lucian, and they're going to get Tarek Lucian here. So uh, actually, should they get onto Bard, it'll be difficult for Bard to deal with this. There's a lot of uh, pressure coming up from both of these guys. And they have that invulnerability as well, so uh, that could be pretty important depending on what gets picked up here by, TC, uh, by GLB. Obviously, they've left their top lane pick till the very last because of how Yoppa has been performing. They want to give him the best potential in top lane to uh, have the good lane, lane matchup. He had a good lane matchup last time. Now he's going to have the opportunity to do so this time. We could see now, we could see Fiora. I think if I were a safe man for GLB, I would pick up Nar because it's a little bit harder to counter Nar in top lane. Yeah, and also just because Yoppa did terrifying things on it last yeah. game. I think just even if you aren't comfortable on Nar, just get rid of it. Make sure, sure. that you're not against Yoppa's Nar specifically. Absolutely, and obviously with the uh, the Syndra being there as well, the Nar Syndra combo is pretty heavy. Looks like we could see a Rise coming through. I think Nunu's probably a. Uh, it's got to be a place. It's got to be a placeholder. We'll figure out what that is afterwards. Now, this is a question for you, Munchables. Do we see Zanny pick up the Rise again, and could this be the return of the Nocturnal Plex Lee Sin? However, we do. We have seen Zanny play a very convincing Lee Sin previously. I think it was last week. Yeah, so. I think it was, and I was super. I was absolutely certain that it was going to be going the way of Plex, but it wasn't. In the end, meant to be, and. I, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, because, you know, Ryze is one of those champions that it's very, very high APM, very, very high kind of mechanics required, and that kind of suits Plex's playstyle, right? He absolutely loves playing that kind of play. In fact, the Nunu is Aurelia. Aurelia. That's going to be what the placeholder that, is. That's so. an interesting one, because it makes Nar less favorable now for TCA. Yoppa potentially not wanting to pick Nar into the Aurelia, because in mini Nar form, he does not have a good time versus her. Uh, he could very well pick Fiora here. I don't think Fiora is the worst choice into Irelia, and obviously the later the game goes, the, sp the better the split push, but is that actually a top lane Poppy? Now, Poppy, I think, I can't remember, I have to have a double check of the, the patch notes, but feel like Poppy may have received some love in 619. I haven't completely looked over them. Well, I did look over them, but I've just forgotten. But um, I, 
that'd be interesting because we just haven't seen Poppy have a resurgence at all recently. No, we'll have to see what that is going to be. We will just get the redraft on the way. Obviously, Nunu was a placeholder, so just going to quickly rattle on through the draft once again, and then we're able to lock everything on in and get this going, and this should just instantly lock everything. So it was the Aurelia in the top lane, and it is going to be Poppy top lane. So yeah. Poppy versus Aurelia, not a lane that I've seen in, in a, a very long time uh, since probably old school Poppy. I want to say, because Aurelia has not been in the meta for, well, pre, pre recently. Aurelia hadn't been in the meta for basically a year, I think. Yeah, Aurelia's had like spots where she's been favorable. Like, yeah. whenever you see ranged top laners come back into the fray, you often see Aurelia make her way back in, um, just because her ability to get onto ranged top laners is just so good, and her dueling mm -hmm. potential against uh, ranged top laners is just so good. Um, but I, I think I have seen this matchup a few times. It, it was moderately popular at some point when Poppy was post rework, and actually Poppy had a pretty good time versus Aurelia, especially if you go down um, the route of picking up the Iceborne Gauntlet or even Triforce to an extent. Uh, you actually duel quite well against Aurelia. Plus, you always have that ranged shield throw which can provide an element of harass as well. So uh, and also you can block her blade search. You know, if you yeah. time if you time your W correctly, you block blade search. She blade searches to a minion you W, she can't blade search to you. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see how that lane matchup is going to pan out. I, I think it's going to be a lot down to junglers, you know, because I don't think either of these junglers is going to be willing. I don't know what happened to my voice just then. It's going to be willing <laughs> to allow this top lane to snowball away, least of all Zanny. I think he has to put a lot of focus in this top lane because the second Yopper starts to get a lead, he will run away with it. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I think for the most part, Ezreal and um, Bard can stay, stay quite safe in the bot lane. At least Ezreal definitely can. Now, Bard's positioning is going to be key here. Obviously, Raisins and Deadly will be looking to group up on Bard if they're trying to get a stun onto him. That could prove, provide an excellent opportunity to get a double stun onto them. Bard also can escape very easily through Tribrush block area. I don't really know what to call that. That area of land that's near the tribrush, especially yeah. on blue side. So that's always a good escape path for him. Um, and obviously baiting people in that way into a Lee Sin could work. So it's all going to be depending on Dandy's positioning in lane. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the total idea behind the team composition in, is here for GLB. Now, obviously, Irelia is going to split push. As the game progresses, she'll be very good at dealing with both Syndra and Lucian. She won't be phased by the stuns coming out from Syndra or Tarek that easily because obviously of her passive. So do we run this into a teamfight composition where she can isolate Syndra or Lucian and Lee Sin can follow up very easily? You know, uh, you have a rise. He's always going to be an element of teamfight in that particular situation. My only weird concern is is what's this Ezreal and, and, and Braun, prov or rather Bard, providing to this composition? I guess a, an element of control. Um, you have the, the Bard to control team fights with his ultimate. You can isolate people that way. It looks like they've got a very good isolating composition as well as an element of catch there. Uh, but obviously the split push with Aurelia is always going to be strong as the game progresses. So that's kind of where yeah. I think, you know, I'm trying to figure out exactly what this team composition is designed to do. Um, I guess if they get ahead, it's almost they're almost unstoppable. Yeah, and I think as well, one thing that this team composition has is just powerful, powerful skirmish. Like yes, when you totally. look at each of these champions, they are all champions that lend to skirmishing and that was where GLB fell behind last game when it came to those skirmishes when it came to the three-man four-man fights they started to fall behind TCA so maybe just opting to go for a composition that's like hey if that's how you want to play this game then let's play it like that and we'll go for a composition that actually will win those situations and we'll be able to snowball that into a lead so yeah definitely got the skirmishing in their favor there as well you know two three versus threes two versus twos you'd expect actually GLB have a pretty good chance of winning those. They've got uh, people who aren't going to be too phased by Syndra, uh, especially Rise and Irelia, and Ezra was a little bit harder to lock down as well, so they've got high mobility that's an instantaneous blink this time round on their carry as well, so also they scale very well. Both Rise, Irelia, and Ezreal scale pretty well into the late game, as does um, Bard, to be honest. So they scale a little bit more nicely, they've got longer range this time with the Ezreal, so yeah, I quite like where we're seeing this go. Um, whereas on the TCA side, you've just got pretty good. You've got good siege. Uh, top lane eventually probably will have better split push than Aurelia. Uh, you know, as the game progresses, Poppy's just a monster. And actually, Poppy's team fight prowess is going to be similar to that of Aurelia. You're looking to lock people down. Better at locking down Ezreal as well. You can stop his arcane shift, I believe, with your W. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I, this is just a, a bit more of a brawly 
two sets of team fight compositions. You don't really have a particular win condition for either, uh, but I would say TCA are a little bit more on a timer apart from Yopper. Yeah, well, I mean, there's certainly a win condition of destroying the enemy Nexus for both of these teams. That's something they've both got in common, but we'll have to wait and see. And I've got to say, once again, we're looking at a composition from TCA that kind of hinges on Yopper because we mentioned how when you look at each and every one of the champions on GLB's lineup, it's Poppy that is kind of the, the thorn in their side. It's Poppy that's going to be stopping the mobility. It's Poppy that's going to be really harassing these carries and making it difficult for the snowball to happen. So I think Yopper once again has his work cut out in this game. Totally. I, I, I am completely on board with that. Yopper again has to step up to the plate because if no one else gets rolling from TCA, then you're just going to get outscaled as the game progresses. Now, the, the dual potential of Lucian versus Ezreal for the majority of the game is going to be better for, for Lucian. You know, you have Ghostblade. That's going to make you instantaneously better in an engage with the Ezreal. Um, but obviously, if Bard sticks around, that makes it harder for Lucian to do his thing. And obviously, as the game progresses, Ezreal is, may go the Triforce build, he may go the Frozen Gauntlet build, but most people now tend to go Triforce on the AD carry Ezreal. And as the game gets further and further along, you're going to have more and more damage output, especially once you've stacked up that tier. Uh, and, and then eventually, Lucian won't be able to keep up with the damage. No, absolutely not. Well, let's head on to the Rift, ladies and gentlemen, because the game has begun. We're going to be seeing the second game in this best of three between TCA and GLB. GLB this time on the blue side. And let's see if they're going to be able to get themselves back in this series. I've got to remind you once more, this is the final series in Group A. Whoever wins this will grab themselves a spot in our semifinals at Comic-Con. And whoever loses is going to be going home empty-handed. So it is all on the line for these teams right now. TCA 1-0 up in this series. And it's going to be on the shoulders of GLB to try and find their way back in. So let's see how this one is going to start off. Already a little bit of harass going down towards the bottom side of the map. Walking forward, getting a ward down on that Gromp. But they don't really want to commit to anything too aggressive. So... I was talking about win conditions for these team munch, and if I'm completely honest, this is one of the first times in League of Legends that I've been completely stumped as for a solid win condition for either team. You know, usually there is a, a, a very clear win condition. I guess the win condition here for GLB is is you get late game, you win. You have Rise, you have Ezreal, Aurelia does do pretty well, but against Poppy in a 1v1 as the game progresses, you probably would give that over to Poppy if all is played well in Poppy's favor. And then you have the win condition of Yopper once more. Um, the team fight control, I would argue, may be equal between both sides. You know, you, especially if Yopper is involved, you have a good AoE stun from Krogson, especially if he's picking up multiple uh, orbs. Uh, Tarek provides amazing elements of team fight control depending on where he's putting his Bastion. And then obviously Poppy provides that element too. But then you're going up against Ryze, Bard, Ezreal. If he's not going, the Frozen Gauntlet build discount that. Um, they they have pretty good team fight control in themselves as well, especially since the, you know Lee Sin is one of the masters of peel in the late game too. Um, so against Poppy, if you just kick her away from Ezreal every single time, she will struggle to, to to catch back up because she only has that limited movement speed burst when she procs her W. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, this is a um, this is a super interesting set of compositions coming through where the win condition kind of almost lies on let's just win fights and if we get ahead we roll or we get late game and we win you know it's kind of almost to that extent i'm curious as well to see once we get to kind of the 15 minute mark in this game i think that's where things are going to start to kick off sure I think that's Triforce where is getting built exactly yeah <laughs> we're going to start to see power spikes and we're going to start to see these teams really look for those fights and actively try and find the battles and especially that's one thing to be mentioned is, well, I, I suppose it's less prevalent now that we're on new Poppy instead of the old one, but certainly the Irelia versus Poppy matchup historically would have been just a race for Triforce. Yeah, no, I, I, do you know what? I completely agree, but I, I honestly don't think that many Poppies go for Triforce no. these days. And I actually think it would be, Rest in peace. I actually think it would be a mistake to go for Triforce in this particular matchup. I would much prefer to see something like a Black Cleaver into a Frozen... Uh, Gauntlet, just because the, the element of control it versus the Rise and the Aurelia and even the Ezreal to an extent it provides you will just be too uh, unparalleled in a teamfight situation should Yopper get ever get stuck into it. And also then in, in a 1v1, this is kind of the pressure you expected to see onto, uh, onto the Bard early on, but look how much uh, Deadly is taken in return. Yeah, absolutely well. Pretty damn good trade there coming out for GLB, managing to get a little advantage in the bottom lane, but 
they're still losing out in terms of pushing that lane, and that's just one of the things about laning against Lucian. He is so good at clearing those waves. Level 2 battle going on up here in the top lane. It's going to be just about even Stevens at the end of it, though, in the end. I think Shikari coming out ever so slightly ahead. But yeah. I wouldn't be too surprised to see one of these two really go kind of ham on this one, but I don't think it can be Shikari with the amount of minions that are there. No, absolutely. And y Yopper is losing them because that second portion of his Q is not yet hitting uh, Shikari. He's doing a good job of negating that. And actually, he's resulted in Yopper losing some minions because he's being so aggressive. And actually, you could end up seeing Shikari come ahead on minions as well here. Well, Yoppa is actually going to be trading pretty aggressively here. It was Shikari that started things there, but Zani comes into the lane. I don't know if he can actually go for this fight with the amount of minions that are here. Yoppa is happy to keep on sparring with him. That's, and uh, it actually just forces away Zani. That's really solid play from Yoppa because he knew that if he kept Leeson in a position where he was threatening a charge onto the wall, Leeson would not be able to get round the back of him. Also, if he could dodge his Q, that basically means that Lee Sin loses the trade. Oh, he's going to go oh, in here. here we go. Go for the dive. Yopper, super aggressive on that one. Zani is still here. Has flash available. Does he go for the flash sonic wave? Yes, he does. First blood comes through. And there we have it. The courage play comes from Zani, and it is going to pay off. Oh, that was all because Shikari managed to land a clutch queued equilibrium strike. They basically queued that one up, and as soon as the charge onto the turret happened, he equilibrium striked at the same time, meaning that Yopper was stuck under turret while he was stunned, and that allowed him to flash away for free. So really good play there. Uh, and actually, because Zani knew that the uh, aggression was peaking in the top lane, he stuck around, and that was a really good decision-making process from him. But Jet now trying to have an impact in the mid lane. Yeah, I've got to say as well, that's kind of a... That's quite a big deal from GLB, the fight that there's... Oh, Zani shot Massive. by a spear just there, and actually might be punished for this one. Jet is chasing for it. If he can land another spear, that would just about be a kill, but... Zani narrowly getting away. Yoppa's, yeah, y Yoppa can't react because of the, the minion wave in the top lane. You know, had Yoppa been able to react, that would have been an easy set, uh, kill there on to Zani. Uh, yeah. But he does manage to get away. But yeah, what I was saying before as well, GLB doing a fantastic job of reading their opponents, right? Like, last game they saw, you know, Yoppa, if he can get a lead, if he finds that he has any kind of advantage, he will go aggressive and he will try and be proactive and make plays happen. And so they read it like a book that he's more than willing to go for that tower dive and they counter it perfectly. And uh, this is the bot lane that is having a massive impact for uh, GLB as well. Look at the CS difference, it's opened up to 10, even though there is a big minion wave pushing on towards Deadly. Raisins and Deadly can't actually make the engages happen because they can't get enough burst damage down onto the Bard right now. And Ezreal, every time, is stepping up and reacting and putting pressure onto Deadly himself. So Deadly then has to back away from that particular engage. The downside, though, is while they do have that 10 CS lead down in the bottom lane, every other lane is at least 10 CS up in favor of TCA. Here we go in the mid lane, though. Nice portal. The portal comes on through but doesn't really quite reach his target so I do end up having to back away in the end. And Jet actually come up to this top lane to help push out a little bit. Yeah, I think they need to be careful though. Zani is hanging around and he's got that Coalfield's Warhammer already finished so uh, we're going to be having a little bit of a boost in terms of damage output at this point in time. Zani's sticking around. They, they, I think they're looking for a tower dive here. Yeah, they are going to go for it as well but unfortunately the jungler play was there in the meantime in the mid lane. It was a kill going the way to Plex. So, unfortunately, missed that one. But it was Krogson going down 1-0 in favor of Plex now. I saw it on my screen. What happened was is uh, Krogson uh, basically tried to dive Plex. Plex flashed in over the stun, locked him up with the rune prison. He'd already been hit by a basic attack and then exhausted as the Syndra ultimate came through. So uh, he made a nice little flash play there onto Krogson and does pick up the kill for his rewards. GLB having, again, a very good early game. The gold lead starting to open up. This is something that I've been used to saying with GLB, and TCA are going to have to step up once more. Yeah, they certainly are. And I mean, so far, it certainly feels like TCA's weakest part of the game is this first sort of 10, 15 minutes. This is where they've been struggling in this series. GLB, let's not go overkill on it just yet, they do still have a long way to go. They're oh, only yes, a couple of sure. hundred gold ahead in the grand scheme of things because in terms of farming, they've not really been doing that hot, especially in terms of the jungle, especially in terms of top and mid lane. But here we go, Jet and Raisins starting to go for a little bit of an invade here, maybe looking to try and find a kill. They're between the towers though, they can't really go too far for this one, Zanny. Threatening the sonic wave there, he's not going to follow up onto that one, but Raisins... Actually, just walking straight underneath the tower. He knows that his team is there to protect him. So, 
will be able to go for that more aggressive pathing. It's really interesting to me that uh, Lemon Knight has decided to go for Cull with his tier here. And that's just specifically because I feel like they actually had the advantage in the bot lane. They looked like they were doing well in trades. Uh, and he's actually decided that he needs to play for the later game with this cull, which I actually don't think he needed to do. Um, I actually think he could have foregone that and maybe picked up some more damage items. But because I guessed what he thought was, I'd rather have a cull over maybe a longsword, because longsword isn't going to provide me that much against the BF sword. It's better to just play towards my overall win condition, which is just accelerate my late game as much as I physically can. So maybe you might start to see Lucian and Tarek start to go a bit more aggressive now in the 2v2. They have the item power spike. They actually probably have the damage with the, uh, the culling once that's there to try and burst Bard out. So keep an eye on that bot lane. I think there could be some action soon. Yeah, I definitely think so as well. I agree with the decision to go for the call, just mm. because, you know, you are Ezreal, you're not realistically going to buy an item that matches the BF Sword, and you don't want to go for that BF Sword first. So it's kind of like a, you know, you've just got to find a different way to take advantage of that lead that he had and sure opt the, to go for the late game for it. The, the, I guess the response to BF Sword for Ezreal would have been going for Sheen early on, but he decided to go for the Ruby Crystal in the cull. So uh, that, that was something that was interesting for me. Oh, Shikari flashes over the wall, but Crogson is already there. That was waiting a great for play. Him. Really, really <laughs> nice from TCA. So well coordinated, but Zanny, he's not going to let them get away with this one. Plex is here as well, and Crogson is going to go down. Basically, no punish available. And well reacted there by GLB. We're just praising TCA on their coordination, but GLB proved that they have it as well. Dandy going to get locked up in the bottom lane, though. There goes the True Shot Barrage, but the culling is going to answer for that one. And the damage is just so much stronger for Deadly, but it's not enough right now. The heal comes on through. Stop oh, lands missed. only onto the support, but they both have to flash away. Deadly narrowly survives, but he's getting chased down by an Aurelia. 80 carry for 80 carry in the end. But it is also going to be the kill going the way of Dandy onto Raisins. And actually, Zanny is already up there to prevent the push going on. And Yopper isn't even in position to try and exploit this. So uh, a good trade for GLB. Like I said, I was expecting fireworks in the bottom lane because that small item advantage was there for Deadly and Raisins. But they didn't manage to capitalize on it the way I think they would have wanted to. A uh, good little insect play or flash insect play coming onto Krogs. And actually, they're going to go onto Plex because Jet is here. Look at the damage onto Krogs, and though Plex does not care. He is not afraid of this 2v2 right now. And I think rightly so, because at that rate, I'm not sure they could actually be able to take him out. He's already got that catalyst, already has a tier as well. When you play in Rise, you can afford to go for those kind of items and still be aggressive. Dandy, not even any of it. Just get a completely lock up jet and just waddle away through the jungle. So this is actually a big item spike for Rise. Going for the Catalyst of Aeons and the tier is actually probably his biggest early game item spike that he'll get because this is just pure mana that he's getting at this point in time. The exhaust comes out, the teleport's coming through as well. Yeah, exhaust onto Krogson. That is going to be him flashing away to safety, actually. The rest Whoa. of the team is here and Zani is going to be going down here. That goes the way of Yopper, TCA. Perfectly punish GLB for their aggression right there. That is going to mean that Zani goes down for nothing. Shikari, though, is going to be able to push at least for a little while in the top lane. Do you know what I've been super impressed with by TCA? It's their coordination. I almost feel like it's out of this world in teamfight scenarios. The way they're a bit, oh my word, goodbye Ezreal, potentially. Yeah, this is going to be the end of his life. I'll be very, very impressed if he survives this one somehow. Does actually blink away, but doesn't have the damage really to punish anyone. He's, He's still survived. alive. He's still yeah, survived. Yeah, they donate the kill to Deadly in the end. It's like quite a while to finish off that AD carry, but it is going to mean that they do get the kill now, and they should be able to get this bottom lane tower as well. First tower of the game, if they can just finish it off. Dandy trying to do something about it, but I don't think there's really a whole lot he can do. Although he's forced away deadly, that was the damage coming onto the tower. And at this rate, maybe they do finally finish it in the end. Zani has arrived back on the scene right now, and Raisins is going for this one, but... They're pretty much out of mana on the side of TCA, so they can't really go too deep. Here comes the Rise Wellmot. Oh, they're actually going for this one. They're continuing to go for the chase. Deadly has been left all alone. And it's going to be Dandy taking the kill. I'm not sure that was particularly well advised to steal the kill away there. But in the end, at least it is a bit of gold for their team. So I want to point out one of the itemization choices for Yopper as this mid lane tower goes down to Krogson, who very cleverly did a good push into this mid lane when Ryze was walking down. That was actually a nice play by Deadly to keep in there as much as possible. As at this duel as well. Krogs are doing so much damage, but he's just kind of blown his load at that point, and Nocturnal Plex is more than happy to punish him for that. Yeah, absolutely. And actually now Zanny lands oh, the Q. There it is. Zanny goes in, executes him with the heel of his boot. There goes down Croxon, so the damage just not quite there. 
and GLB once again able to punish. And I mean, we were talking about in Champion Select how these two teams were looking to skirmish, and well, I think yeah. we've proved our point. Yeah, it's been a lot of skirmishing so far, both teams wanting to do that. I, I really think that Krogson has been shut down hard in this mid lane, though, and also going to be shut down even further with the inclusion of this uh, Negatron Cloak being finished up by Nocturnal Plex. Krogson just needs to go back to farming, stop dueling. This has been one of his major problems, but Jamal... Yeah. That's not Jamal, it's actually not Jamal, that is Shikari indeed. But <laughs> unfortunately, those hips don't lie and Shakira will go down. Oh God, I, I, I read his club. I always do this, sometimes I read the clubs, especially when it's a name and I'm like, oh, that's definitely their name. And now I've just called Shikari Jamal. Nice, uh, nice spear by Jet, by the way. It cleared the minion wave as opposed to trying to land damage with the uh, echoes from his uh, runic echoes jungle item. That was a very good spear there. I want to pick up on some of the uh, itemization choice by Yoppa. This is a classic poppy build now when you're trying to be a, a more of a frontline defense poppy instead of an aggressive poppy, because actually this allows you to trade in lane 1v1 incredibly efficiently, especially versus Norelia who hasn't yet finished Triforce, especially one who hasn't got Sheen. Uh, your ability to trade 1v1 when you've got the uh, Sunfire Cape is huge, because your sustain in a, in a smaller skirmish actually probably does better than Irelia. No, it's not Plex. Oh, Plex is flashing aggressively there and will be able to shut down Croxon for it. I love that kind of play when you see a player go aggressive and punish. But here we go. Jet is going to be locked up and Shikari is there to punish. But there is Yopper knocking him away with the Hammer of Justice. Shikari does get the exhaust down on to Jet. They're oh, continuing the to skirmish. But here comes Raisins getting the stuns out, getting the heals out, and in the end, the fight is disengaged. Mid laner for mid laner. These teams are going blow for blow and meeting each other at every step of the way. Yeah, and uh, Poppy is going to get infinitely tanky with just a little bit of resist. Oh my word, goodbye, yeah. Dandy. That is Dandy gonna not be going down. He got the heal off in the end, and Yopper's completely locked up. They don't have the damage, though. This is the issue of going for this late game Ezreal build. You just what? can't Yopper, really where follow. Are you going, Yopper just goes so deep for this one. He does finish off the AD carry, though. So, despite that ridiculously aggressive play, he gets away with things. Although, I don't know if we can really commit, commit to saying he got away with that, since he does end up going down as well. So. All in all, the trades continue to go on, but 3,000 gold lead now for TCA. They are starting to get the better of the situation. And actually, Drakes have not been prioritized thus far. No. And, no. It's, actually, and it's a mountain Drake, which would be very good for TCA's ability to siege onto turrets, because honestly, their siege isn't fantastic. Yes, you've, yes, you've got the Syndra, but you're actually moderately short range in terms of your ability to siege onto turrets, and that, the wave clear just coming from Rise would be pretty hard for them to cope with, as well as the threat of getting stunned up by Bard. So you have to be careful when you siege for TCA. So having a, a Mountain Drake will be infinitely helpful for them. Going to get the uh, blue buff onto Syndra. And that's because of all the skirmishing, by the way, and because everyone's been swapping lanes, everyone's been teleporting all over the place. No one's had time to think about taking Drake because things have just been happening all over the map. I also want to point out that we're getting to 15 minutes and we're still an entire sheen away from a Triforce for the Irelia. Also, an entire stinger away for a Triforce from the Ezreal. Yeah, so still a long way to go for these two carries. It's going to be tricky, but Essence Reaver has already been finished for Deadly here. A lot of damage going to be coming out from him and as well going to be able to get that mana back on the crits. Yeah, I'm interested in this because obviously classically you generally tend to see Ghostblade at these current times go onto the, uh, the Lucian. Shikari. Yeah, Shikari has been locked up here. Yoppa should have the damage. Blade Surge going to get knocked up because of that. Oh, there we go. That is going to be the Bard all of it coming through. I thought Shikari was almost certainly going to go down there, but does get saved by his support. The Magical Journey comes on through Jet, trying to finish off these kills, but he's not going to be able to. Zani jumps to the rest of his team, has that Dragon Strike if he needs it, but he's holding on to that ability. Plex is going to be the target now. They've, they've changed their minds, and that Dragon Strike only manages to knock up one. Zani still somehow surviving, though, after going in and out of that fight about 17 times. GLB survived with no casualties. But all this helps them do, despite not picking up any kills, they're going to get another turret in this top lane. They should be able to siege effectively. The wave clear probably won't be there because Nocturnal Plex is only just backing. So it's going to be an easy turret picking up for TCA here. And again, their early game that was pot potentially fatal in the early laning phase has just been reconciled, essentially. And now they're able to start winning once more as this game progresses. But they're doing it with much more vigor than they were last game. They're looking to put pressure on far earlier. And because both Plex and... Yep. Uh, Lemon Knight took ages to back here. They could end up losing an inhibitor. They certainly could. Here we go. The fight has begun. And TCA, they're looking to really make things happen in this one. That is going to be the inhibitor going down in just a couple more hits than they will be able to do so. 
fantastic decisive play coming out from TCA and here comes Lemonite trying to punish these players on this Ezreal but he's too little too late. Here we go though, the teleport comes on through the oh, triple stun though, comes movie? out in the end. This is going to be an absolute wipe. Raisins with the play coming on through. Four members go down, Zani nowhere to be seen and TCA just in commanding position right now. Oh, that, that's giving me flashbacks to, uh, I think it was, I think it was literally GLB last week where yep. they yep. they rise up with it into nowhere and end up getting picked off by it. That's flashbacks to that GLB because they, they rise ultimately straight into a multiple man Tarek stun. No, it was Perilous that did it against oh, Perilous, GLB. Oh, Perilous it? did it, it against... You know, like, GLB probably should have learned from that. They yeah, were yeah. the ones that punished that last time and then they end up going for it. Yeah, so that would just give me flashbacks to these, these rise ultimates that are a little bit out of their boots, not considering all options. That was like the, the these kind of things as Krogson gets locked up by the uh, bad ultimate. I think that's a good buy, Krogson. Huh? Yeah, see you later, Krogson. He is going to get finished off in the end. Dandy grabs the kill for himself, so he's finally Raisin landed splashed his for that as well. trick. Oh, did he really? Yeah, Raisin's flashed to try and save him. Oh, okay. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's going to be a support flash burn. For basically no gain in the end. But all in all, I don't think they're too fussed right now. They're six and a bit thousand gold ahead of their opponents. They're really starting to the Trifle rock still it. hasn't been finished on her really. She's and still still not yet got that and it's heading towards 20 minutes. Only just picked up the Sheens, so still lacking that combination gold. Which is a pretty huge deal to be honest, because it just meant that Irelia's impact as a carry in that top lane has been severely limited. Whereas you're seeing Yopper go straight down that tank route, which we know Poppy does incredibly well at. Uh, with the percentage damage that her Q does, so... Oh. I remember when Triforce didn't have a combined cost. It was three gold. Hashtag make Triforce great again. But... Here we go. It's going to be the Siege beginning in this bottom lane. GLB, they've already lost their top lane inhibitor and they might just be looking at losing a second one as well. Yoppa going to be slowed down here. Shikari can't quite get the stun, but it's going to be Dandy who gets knocked up. Look at this damage coming out. They've managed to knock Lemonite into the wall. He will blink away to safety though. True Shot Barrage lands onto four members, but it does barely any damage whatsoever. He just does not have the items at this early stage in the game. And in the meantime, we've got Croxon just waiting for someone to dare to go into that area of the map. Yeah, and he actually managed to push up a little bit in the mid lane. That was a fight without Krogs, and by the way, the Rub Walk comes through. Yeah, here we go. They are going to go for this fight once again. The tower has finally gone down, and that means TCA can be all that more aggressive. Jet has the Sonic Wave on him, but there's no way Zanny can follow that one through. The inhibitor is in trouble now. His Plex is getting chunked on out deadly on this front line, trying to push them back, but he is going to be taking a lot of damage himself. TCA, they're actually starting to run out of HP. But the inhibitor, it's gone down in the end. TCA have got away with things. There's no ultimates available except for Transcendent Blades and, of course, the Bard ultimate as well. But realistically, they're not going to be able to achieve anything with that combination. And that means that once again, TCA just waltz on in, take an objective and leave unscarred. So what I think is so useful about the way the Yop has played this game is because, I, you know, I was talking about maybe going for some damage items early on, but actually he's, he's trumped that. And he's gone for early resistances, which with this later game scaling team, in terms of this Rise and this Ezreal, if you pick up early resistances, especially with their build paths, you make it very hard for them to prioritize any form of penetration early on. Uh, you know, you, you're not seeing Ezreal pick up uh, a Last Whisper anytime soon. You're not seeing Rise probably picking up a Void Staff anytime soon. So it makes him very hard to deal with, especially because Poppy innately, because of a passive, is quite tanky anyway. So he's able to soak up all this damage as Yopper on the front line, and no one is able to punish him for it in the mid game. And that's where actually GLB is weakest in this mid game period. So this is meaning that Yopper is just able to sit on that front line, allow Deadly and Krogson to do what they can from the back line. And despite the fact Krogson hasn't had a particularly good game, he's again just built for teamfight control. He's built to allow Deadly, even Jet, who is 505, by the way, and Yopper to do their thing. And that's a very selfless build coming out from Krogson. Absolutely. This is going to be another inhibitor tower going down. Shikari so, so low. He has to go back to Fountain. So it's basically 4v5. Zani incredibly low right now. And he has to jump away. He actually goes back into the fight looking to finish off Yopper. But he just doesn't have the damage. And look at this deadly. So aggressive. And he has the ability to be because his team is so far ahead. Third inhibitor drops. TCA 
They're looking to finish off this game. They're looking to finish off this series and secure their ticket to Comic-Con. I don't think there's anything that GLB can do about this one in the end. Jet just walking on forwards. He knows that he's invincible for now. Shikari is going to get pinned down, locked down, and shut out of the game, as well as his AD carry. Plex on this front line, just trying to do what he can, but Yoppa is more than happy to body block for Deadly, who is just chunking these members down. The Nexus will fall, though, and after all of that, GLB are going to lose out 2-0 to TCA, who are our victors, and will move on to the semi-finals. They'll be going to Comic-Con, my friends. We will be seeing them there at the end of October. Brilliant performance by them. And actually, uh, there's a couple of key aspects that I just want to highlight very quickly before we move on here. Now, I talked about Yoppa's build path. It meant he could tank very early in the mid-game. He was very hard for uh, TCA, uh, GLB to deal with before they got to the late game, before they could prioritize pe penetration. And the fact they shut down Aurelia so much, delayed that Triforce so much, the true damage wasn't really coming into play because we didn't actually see much of a laning phase between these two. Things swapped around very quickly. And it meant that team fights where Aurelia didn't have Triforce just wasn't going to be impactful. She really needs to split for a bit longer and then pick up some defensive items afterwards. So Yoppa built very selflessly, probably the traditional poppy build path to be honest with the, the Sunfire Cape, but still it was the right build path, you know, could have easily gone Black Cleaver, could have easily tried to be the hero, but built to just soak damage. And as a poppy against late game scaling teams in the mid game, you will soak for days. Yeah. The other thing I want to pick point out is the build path on Deadly. Now, most people would say, why is he not building Ghostblade? I know there has been some changes recently, but why is he not building Ghostblade? Why is he not building that traditional Lucian build or that we see sometimes which is like Black Cleaver, Ghostblade? Well, he wasn't playing a skirmish Lucian role this time around. He wasn't playing a 1v1, 2v2 skirmish.